YouTube. This is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with another Audacity tutorial. And this one has to be one of my most requested tutorials ever. And this one is how to transfer vinyl over to your computer. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this Sylvania Soundburger type USB turntable. Uh, you can pick these up on Amazon uh, for pretty cheap. I forget how much I paid for it, but I'll post a link down below. Or if you have a regular turntable, uh, there's another device that you can use that's made by Behringer that allows you to plug in a regular turntable and has the ground uh, connection on it as well. So I'll post a link for that too. So whichever type of turntable you're using, you'll be able to do the same technique. So you're gonna need a turntable obviously, and I'm assuming you already have records. Um, so let me just show you uh, how this is hooked up. Basically, it's just a USB cable that runs from the turntable into the computer. It's very simple. And then let's go ahead and get a record and then I'll put that on there and then we'll get into Audacity and show you how to set that up. Okay, so the album we're going to be using is my record, Minnesota, that I released in 2016. Uh, this is on 180 gram vinyl and it was really, ooh, this one's got a big chip out of it right here. That's interesting. But uh, anyway, uh, you can pick one of these up for 10 bucks shipping included if you're in the US with the link down below. And I played every, every instrument on here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to this. All right, another thing we're gonna wanna do before we get into Audacity is actually make sure your record and your needle are clean uh, before you record. And the way to do that is to use something like this. Uh, this is just a basic uh, record uh, cleaner that cleans out all of the dust and stuff on the record. Uh, before you play it and then I also have this little brush um, as well as this cleaning solution um, all of these you can buy on Amazon and again I'll post links for all this stuff down below and so first off let's go ahead and clean the record itself so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this solution you don't want to get this stuff on your hands because uh, I'm told that this is actually quite toxic so don't get it on your hands if you can um, and then just go ahead and put a little bit, hopefully that's focusing, a little bit on the brush itself. Now, of course, I'm sure there's gonna be some vinyl snobs out there that hate what I'm actually doing right now with this particular brand uh, and cleaner and everything, and there's a lot of people that really get very uh, anal about this stuff, so, you know, I understand, but uh, I'm not one of those people. You know, this actually works good enough for me, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, so anyway, let's just go ahead and make the record spin a little bit. I'm just holding this out here just to make it spin. And then I'm gonna gently place the cleaner on the record and let it clean out all of the dust that is in the grooves. Okay. And then we'll wanna let that dry before we actually, uh, and you can see here the dust that came off of the album. Of course, this album is pretty much brand new, so it's not that dusty but that will improve the sound quality quite a bit. Now, with the brush, all you have to do is just sort of gently brush towards you on the needle just to get rid of all the dust that has built up on the needle itself. And that should take care of that. Now let's go ahead and get into Audacity. All right, so here we are inside of Audacity and we're gonna need to change a couple of things in order for this to work correctly. And the first being, we're gonna to wanna to go here. Well, actually, no, first let's go into our preferences. Let's go to edit and then go into preferences. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the recording section and make sure that software playthrough of input is selected. This way you can actually hear the record while you're recording it, and that's pretty important. And then you just click okay. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go to our uh, mic input right here on the left just under the playback section and then we're gonna select our recording device so let's go down to in my case it's called just microphone USB um, now depending on which type of turntable you have if you're using uh, a regular turntable with one of the Behringer interfaces then you may see Behringer UCA uh, or UFO 202 down there or something like that but just depending on what type of turntable you're using will determine uh, what this is actually named. But in my instance, if you're using one of these Sylvanias, it's just gonna be called microphone USB. 
And then also you're gonna wanna make sure that you have two uh, recording channels selected right here. So your microphone or your turntable gets recorded in stereo. And then as far as the output, you're just gonna wanna keep it to whatever output you're using to actually listen to the, the turntable. So in my case, it's just my speaker's IO4 uh, interface and that's how I'm gonna be hearing it, so that's fine. Okay, so now what we wanna do is actually start the turntable uh, playing a little bit so we can test the level. And in order to do that, once it's playing back, all you need to do is click in this little playback level area, or sorry, in the recording level area, right here. And you can hear that sounds okay. Um, the sounds a little bit weird because of my recording system I have going on right now with the um, screen capture and stuff, but don't worry about that. Okay, so that seems good. Let's go ahead and stop the record. And now all we need to do is just start recording and then go ahead and start the record. Okay, now I'm just gonna let this record through the full side, side A, and then we're gonna turn the record over and let it record side B. And then I'll pick up the video after this is done. Okay, so that just finished up. And um, one of the things I, I should mention too, uh, you may not need to go into your preferences and set the software playthrough. I just realized uh, some of you might have hardware playthrough already enabled if you're using the Behringer interface, for example. Uh, you'll already be able to hear the turntable without selecting the software playthrough in Audacity. So that will depend uh, depending on which type of turntable you're using. Okay, so now that we have everything recorded, let's go ahead and save our file here. So let's just go to save project as. And I'm just going to call this final transfer YouTube. And I just did the first side on the album because there's no need for me to uh, do both really uh, for this example. But okay, so now that we have all the tracks recorded, what we can do is actually click this little uh, magnifying glass on the far right and that will fit the entire recorded material into one window so you can see everything. And sometimes that takes a little while. There it goes. Okay, so we can see I have one, two, three, four, five tracks recorded here. And you can tell just by seeing where they basically fade out to nothing and then the other track starts up. So how do we get this to turn into songs, uh, individual songs? It's actually quite easy in Audacity and one of Audacity's coolest features. But first, before we do that, let's go in and clean up a couple of things. Uh, one is being right here in the beginning. If we just click in there towards the beginning of the file and let's use the magnifying glass again uh, to zoom in and let's cut off this little blip right here in the beginning. So let's just highlight that and press delete on the keyboard. And then as well as I'm going to highlight what's left and I'm gonna do a fade in effect. And you don't really have to do this, but it just makes it so it's not an abrupt start in the beginning. And you could do that on every song too if you really wanted to get into it. I'm not gonna do that, but uh, you could. So, okay, so next let's zoom back out Make sure we save as often as possible. And I'm gonna click this gray area right here to highlight the whole track. And now what I'm gonna do is go to Effect and I'm gonna to go to Amplify. And now what this will do is amplify the record up to the fullest level that it can be uh, without it distorting. Okay, so once you have your entire project volume corrected, um, what you're gonna to wanna to do now is basically separate all of these. Well, actually, before we do that, let's go here to the end and cut off the end little noise. So let's just do that. Delete that. Zoom out. And now let's go to tracks and we're gonna go to add new and do label track. Okay, and then let's rewind back to the beginning of the project. And now you're gonna go on your keyboard, just hold down control and press the letter B. And now what that's gonna do is create a new label. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is type in 
uh, the name of the first song um, into this label right here. So I have to look on my own record to see what my first song is. So first song for me is called Manatee. And then just press enter. And now what you're gonna do is go to the next section or the next area where the next song starts. Make sure, you might wanna zoom in a little bit here so you can see where the other song really stops. Okay, I'm just gonna pause right there. And then click on the label track where I want my next track to start and then just press Control B again. And now type in the name of that song. All right, <clears throat> now let's move forward and we just repeat the process. Remember, Control B adds a new label. Okay, so once you have all of your labels put in, this is where the true magic of Audacity uh, comes into play. And this is a really, really cool feature. I use this same exact feature when I'm mastering my own records. And uh, I should mention too that I actually mastered this vinyl using Audacity, which is pretty amazing. I mean, I used some other tools too, but I did the final, like the final mastering phase was done in Audacity. Okay, so now that we have all of our labels put in, what we're gonna wanna do is go to Edit, and then we're gonna go into Metadata. Now right here, what we're gonna do is put in our artist name. Oops. Leave your track title blank, put in the album title. Track number, leave blank. You can put in year if you want. Genre, you can put that in too. Comments, you can put that in. So what we're doing here is we're actually leaving the track numbers and the track titles blank. And the reason why we're doing that is you're gonna see here in a minute and just click okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file and then go to export. And then we're gonna go to export multiple. Um, if you want to do mp3, you can just select mp3, but now you'll see all the different formats that you can actually export the record. Um, so what we're going to do is actually use FLAC files. And the FLAC files are lossless audio. Uh, they sound really good, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so after we have our file type selected, FLAC files, and the level that you want to do. Level is just quality of the FLAC file. Uh, actually, if you leave it at 5, it's usually fine. Um, that usually sounds just fine to me. Uh, if you wanted to do mp3, you could, but whatever you're using. Say you have that done. Down here where it says split files based on, make sure you have labels selected, and it should be the only option you have, um, unless you record it on more than one track. But make sure you have it selected as labels. And then over here under name files, uh, you can just leave it to where it says numbering before label slash track name. And now just click export. And now what you'll see is it automatically populates the track title with the first label name right here in the metadata, which is really cool. So we just click OK here. And then same with all these, it's just gonna go through them, but you can see it's automatically filling in the track numbers and the titles. And now it's just exports. So, um, Oh, I forgot to mention here, folder is where it's going to export. So you can see mine just exported to my uh, folder D drive recording slash radio folder. So that's where those all went. Okay, and so let's just go ahead into that folder so you can see where those went. So let's go into radio, that's oh, under recordings, and then radio. Okay, so I have a lot of stuff in here, but if we sort this by album, and find Minnesota, there it is. So these are the tracks that I just exported. So let's go ahead and open one of these up. Let's go to open with, I'll just use Groove Music.
right, so there's the recorded file. Now, one thing you probably want to do too that I forgot to mention, but you know, check your you know your audio before you uh, export everything. Make sure it's okay. You know, you can do that within Audacity just by previewing the files. Uh, if you were listening while it was recording, you know, which you might want to do too to make sure that you don't record any skips or anything like that, because then you'll have to go back and re-record the record. Um, but overall, it's a really easy process. It's really easy to do. Audacity is actually like perfect for this. Um, Audacity is perfect for a few things, and one of them is transferring vinyl. Another one is editing podcasts. Like when I do my podcast, Audacity is the best thing, hands down, to record a podcast and edit it in. It's so fast. And I actually recorded a video um, about creating a podcast from start to finish, and the Audacity editing part of it is in there but it's kind of in the middle of the video. So at one of these points, what I'll do is actually just do a podcast editing video uh, for Audacity at some point, uh, probably pretty soon. So anyway, that's all of that. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions, if I forgot to mention something, feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, subscribe, click like, click the bell icon too, because that way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And one last thing, if you could just check out my Patreon page, it's uh, patreon.com slash demonic sweaters. And if you can donate or support anything there, uh, that'll help me a lot to make more videos like this. And plus you'll get some free music uh, by doing so. Anyway, thanks for watching and everybody uh, have a great week.